Hey, do you want to find out the best changes that you should make to your bathroom to live at home for a lifetime? I am so excited that you're joining us today. Welcome to Toilet Talk. My name is Maria Lindbergh. I'm an occupational therapist and I am the owner of Stay at Home Solutions. Today I have with me Lindsay DeLong of at Equip Me OT, or excuse me, at Equip Me OT. I am getting her to join us right now, or I'm sending a request to join. There we go. Miss Lindsay on today. Let's see. We'll wait a second. Ah, Lindsay, welcome to Toilet Talk. Hello. I'm so glad you're here. Would you please um, tell us more about Equip Me OT? So Equip Me OT was kind of um, born out of just an interest in sharing information that I really thought everybody should have, not just folks who were fortunate or unfortunate enough to require mm -hmm. occupational therapy services. Um, I worked in um, orthopedics and um, trauma and neuro for 10 years and was so shocked to find just like how many people I'd walk into their home and start to give them some information and just how many of them would say, holy cow, I wish I had known this stuff forever ago. And I was like, that's just so unfortunate. So I started sharing YouTube videos and still do um, under the moniker Equip Me OT about six years ago, actually. And it wasn't really a big thing. And then during the COVID pandemic, I was like, we had some time on our hands. We were home a lot. My husband is a film video guy. So we just started cranking out video content. And then all of this has kind of been born of that. So born out of necessity and, and just kind of a passion for sharing this stuff. I think you and I kind of share that a little bit. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. And I love your stuff. I love, uh, because I mean, I think we take for granted, um, as we have the greatest profession in the world, right? We're both occupational oh, therapists. 100%. And we take for granted of all the things that we do know, and we think it's common sense. So when we're working with people and they're like, oh my gosh, I didn't know about this or that, or these little, you know, hacks, um, like I really love uh, recently, well, I always watch your stuff and, you know, comment, um, but I really loved recently how simple just having a TheraBand, which it, that seems like the most standard thing if anyone has any kind of outpatient therapy or, you know, wherever, they always have these TheraBands and where do those TheraBands end up in the corner of someone's room? not used, but if you put it around wheelchair leg rest, that's a great support for your calves. So your uh, feet aren't slipping off and getting, oh, yeah. oh, oh my gosh, I can't tell you how many people I've seen or I've had uh, like residents because my background is in, uh, you know, working long-term care and seeing residents, uh, one time I saw this resident fly out of the wheelchair because her feet were not on the foot rest and they didn't have that calf support. So she fell off and then she was completely bruised on her face. It was around Halloween. So it looked like a little Halloween mask on her. Oh. So it's just really sad. It's like, oh my gosh, you know, the simple things that you're showing people and uh, just giving them ideas like, oh, well, maybe I could do this with that product or with that, you know, yeah. using it. So I, I love your content so much. I'm so glad you're here today. I'm just so happy to be here. And I, I have to say, I'm a huge fan of your new set. It's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank and you. I'm, I'm so jealous because I film in my own personal bathrooms all the time in my home and they are less than stellar. So I just, <laughs> I just so appreciate that you went the extra step because I know that's amazing. So good work. Oh, thank you so much. My bathrooms, I, I feel are less than stellar too, but that's okay. We're showing... I think Real. really with my goal, yeah, like for people, hey, plan ahead, make the bathroom of your dreams now, which yes. which kind of brings me into why I invited you on the show, because I think that uh, with your experience in bathrooms, you know, a lot of different features, a lot of different products. And so what I encourage people is change your bathrooms now so that, you know, whatever happens to you, you will always live at home for a lifetime. So and that's the goal. Yeah. Yes. So, really the, so many people you meet get to the point where they can't live at home and the, the devastation and loss. And, and it's just, it's very difficult to come to that place. And it can come to you at any point in your life. It, it isn't just something that happens with aging. 
I mean, I've worked with, I worked in neurotrauma for most of my career and, you know, a, a little snowmobile crash or, you know, these things happen and all of a sudden you're like, oh no, I can't live at home. And that's devastating. And a lot of it is tied directly to the bathroom. I, yes. it's, it's probably the number one thing that keeps people living in their home long-term is a bathroom situation. And that's, it's, it's simple to fix and yet we don't do it. We don't do it early enough. We don't consider it. And, and the reality is the costs are intimidating. Some of the mm -hmm. concepts are intimidating, but as, as you've done so well and showed all these options that are out there. And I just think that the little bit of foresight and a little bit of planning, you're right. People can stay in their homes and that's just so valuable. Well, thank you so much. I'm so glad to have somebody else agree and, you know, also <laughs> promote, the same, <laughs> and promote the same things. There is, you know, a lot of financial pushback and that is just, yeah, it, the financial challenges are the most difficult. I have um, actually on my website, stayathomesolutionskc.com, I have resources for Missouri and Kansas, like different financial resources to consider. There's really not a lot out there as far as like funding and those kinds of things. But I know that that is one of the biggest barriers is how, how am I going to pay for these right. changes to the bathroom? So I think um, in Michigan, I know there's, there's home mods OTs up there who, who do stuff. Karen Coke, I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, baby. Well, we were the only auto no fault state up here That's in Michigan. Right. Um, and so the home modification industry is booming up here or was, unfortunately, oh. that has changed in the last two years. We've lost oh. a lot of our funding and you're seeing those amazing home modification experts kind of have to change their gears a little bit, but they're there, they're here and they're, and they're sharing what they know. And it's incredible. Um, I have seen what a properly funded um, disability advocate, advocate professional can do in changing somebody's home for the best. And the bathrooms is an area I've learned so much hanging out with contractors and mm -hmm. Nice. Um, case managers and things like that in these auto cases because they have funding to see mm -hmm. what's possible and it inspired me to no end um, whenever That's I awesome. find out somebody's doing a remodel or they're building a new home and they're all excited about it, I'm like have you talked to your builder or your contractor about the things you can do in the process that will set you up for success in your home for the forever one main floor bathroom. That's all it takes. One main floor bathroom that has universal design concepts. It's life changing. And it's not just life changing for you. It's life changing for anyone who purchases that home in the future. So it yeah. brings value, you know, and, and I love, I love seeing that that's something that's spreading a lot more. You see it more. And, yeah. you know, working with some of these European brands, I know with Ponte Julio, they, you know, you see it's so much more common. Yes. That universal design, those barrier-free bathrooms, the, the low threshold, that's more common in other countries than it is here in the U.S. Um, but we're seeing it in, in small, it's starting to make small changes. Um, and it just needs to become the norm because we all benefit. I mean, yes. my three-year-old breaking her arm. Um, oh, that's -year -old, right. I'm sorry. She just turned five. H hello. <laughs> she turned five two days ago. I'm telling her a three-year-old. This, this pandemic has really taken a toll on my concept, but but me she, too, me done, too. Oh my gosh. But she, when she broke her arm, we have these really high level, like very deep soaker tubs. And oh. I was terrified for her trying to step in and out of our bathtub with her arm all casted up, freshly surgically repaired. Um, and so I was just thinking like, we could all benefit from having that low threshold so that she could step in and out with, we put, I added grip tape to the floor. I brought in my oh, shower nice. chairs for her. Um, so she'd have a place to sit when she was really sore or tired. Um, you know, all of the concepts, I have a grab bar in my shower. I have a grab bar in all my showers, actually. Um, and That's we're so in our 30s with young children. And you know what? I love the peace of mind that as a parent I have that my kiddo has something to grab onto when those floors are slick and they've dumped half a bottle of shampoo on the floor and I didn't <laughs> notice. And they're, Woo! you know, so it's like, there's just so many ways that it can benefit, not just the, I think what we have kind of our narrow vision of who it benefits, but having accessible bathrooms in your home. When I have my grandmother visit, I pull out one of my toilet seat risers. I pop it onto the toilet. I tell her that bathroom's for you, grandma. The other one's for the other people if they don't choose to use it. And she is so incredibly grateful to know uh -huh. that she can have the dignity and the independence to just be able to go to the bathroom herself. 
Oh yeah. Amen to that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We're, we're already talking about like a whole bunch of different features, but oh, yeah, sorry. it is so <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. No, please don't know any, this is just a, you know, we're, we're free flowing conversation. There's no structure on toilet talk. So, <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, uh, I, I love that too. So you have that, you know, you're talking about the peace of mind with children young children being able to take care of themselves be you know even five-year-olds um they want to do more on their own um of course grandma doesn't want any help like who wants to go visit their family and like oh can you come help me go to the bathroom or you know can you come help me shower grandma wants to do that on her own you know yep. so just uh, just offering that and being um hospitable or hospitable not hospitable yeah making up new words today but Fine. uh yeah that that is so important and it's yeah. just yeah it's something it's that's small meant. and it's and it's not expensive always um i think we often think of the the grand you know as we started this conversation we were talking about kind of like the big construction projects which mm -hmm. can be can be pricey but there's small things um that you can do in an existing space that makes a world of difference just with some small considerations as you know you know, we walk into a lot of homes. I did home care for seven, seven of my 10 years. And in home health, you're walking into people's homes and a lot of them are very limited as far as their accessibility. But even making small things, small changes can have a world of difference. And, you know, I always start with the toilet, obviously, because being able to independently use a toilet and a shower um, are two things that we take for granted. And so when you take into consideration what are the what are the limitations of the space? What are the limitations mm -hmm. of the people living within that space? Um, and then just bring in options. And I'm a big fan of options. Like I'm oh, not yes. a one, definitely not a one size fits all OT. Like I want, yes. I want you to be as comfortable with what we're presenting you that as I am. Because um, the last thing I want to find out is that those beautiful pieces of equipment that I was so excited to install have landed in your garage, oh. or have been. Or have been donated, <laughs> or living in the basement now, um, I, you know, because you were never truly comfortable with what we, what we suggested, and so having that collaborative effort with people, and that's why I love social media so much. Is I have yes. been able to remotely even provide options. Be like, you can be aware of this stuff yourself, and now all of a sudden, when you have that situation arise you can start to think it through, you know, as to what's best for you and what, what you feel most comfortable with using in your space. Yeah, absolutely. So. And, and using that, you know, your approach, it's so person centered, which we also, you know, try to be, and just absolutely. making sure, you know, this is you, you choose what's going to work best for you. You're the expert on you. I'm here to just guide and, and give you um, yeah. my recommendations or, you know, whatever it is. So that, yeah, absolutely. I, I love that. So starting with the toilet, so if like, let's say you were redoing your bathroom and you're mm -hmm. making the most like beautiful, perfect, functional bathroom for Lindsay, but you want to make sure it's, it's accessible for other people, what would you put in? Okay. So my, like my dream scenario bathroom would include one, it'd be sufficiently large enough to have the turning radius necessary for a rolling some sort of rolling device, whether that's a wheelchair or like a rolling shower commode, um, which actually is smaller than a lot of people think. It's, it's very doable um, because just being able to roll in, roll out. Um, I would also have, let's talk backing. Let's, I'm yes. going to put stud backing in, in my walls in places traditionally where, um, so before the walls are even closed up, I want to have um, blocking between my studs in locations where commonly we would put grab bars. This allows me to not put the grab bar there now, but if I take the pictures of where those are, I can in the future have that. You know, that's um, immensely wonderful when you're talking grab bar placement because I am a huge fan of grab bars. My favorite grab bars right now are the concealed ones, the ones that don't look like a grab bar. Yes. I really like, um, <laughs> I really like my, so my own father has a terrible back. Mm. Life, lifetime of arthritis and injuries and things so and he refused to have a grab bar placed in his brand new bathroom after his house was built so you know uphill battle yeah <laughs> but I found him one that looks like a just a standard toilet roll holder it's by nice. uh, this this particular one was by Presolit, and I believe that's how you pronounce the brand 
but it's <laughs> it's round it's like a circular one and it has a post where the toilet paper roll goes but the, it, it accommodates 350 pounds of pull force That's so great. now he can get up and down my mother is very petite my father is very tall so they did not choose to go with the um high toilets um that so makes having, sense so because ha- you know my mom would her feet would be dangling and my dad felt it was appropriate and so yeah. we put that grab bar in and it's small i mean it's only I mean, it's, it's, you know, let eight inches around. I mean, it's very, very small. Um, but with 350 pounds, my dad can grab onto that thing and pull himself up even when his back is at its worst. And I did convince him to block the wall on the other side of the toilet. So in the future, we may add a, an additional grab bar. But for now, it's all okay. he needs. I'm a big fan of those grab bars that have dual functionality so that the person yes. using them doesn't just feel like they're using a boring old grab bar or, you know, it, yes. it's a beautiful new brat bathroom. And now it's got this kind of thing that they don't want to look at. So I'm a big fan of that. Um, low barrier or barrier three showers have come oh, yes. so far. Yeah. <laughs> and let's just talk about long wall drains instead of oh, centralized yes. drains. So you can do the slanted floor instead of the, because now you can use rolling shower chairs. And this is a concept yes. that I think was completely lost for so long because I was walking into these beautiful accessible bathrooms with drains in the center of the shower floor creating uneven floor structure so now you can't set up a shower chair anything without it wobbling all the time so long long wall drains with the flat I mean it makes those these are small things that in the construction project or in the remodeling project it's insane the difference and they're beautiful those long yes I that oh, would be my dream. <laughs> I totally agree. They are so gorgeous. And I, I just think um, if you ever, I follow like um, Architectural Digest or something like that. Mm-hmm. They showed a picture of um, Serena Williams' daughter's bathroom, her daughter Olympia. It yeah. is, if you look that up, it is like, honestly, one of my dream bathrooms come to life because it has, it has like that wet room style so it has that zero like barrier free entry. It also yeah. does have a soaking tub um, yeah. because, you know, if you have young yeah. children like to take baths, um, yeah. but yeah, it has that. It has um, um, different shower heads. Of course, it has a handheld sh- shower head, which I think every is a must should. for every, yes, every That's single awesome. bath. Like it makes no sense if there's not a handheld shower head in the bathroom, but it also is like gorgeous, the lighting. So you talk about, I love natural lighting and that is definitely something that I would love. It has all these like, um, what are they called? Like uh, transom windows or what are they called? Like the thin windows at the the top. top. Yes. And it's just letting in all this gorgeous like natural lighting. And so, yes, I I totally agree. I love that the long, um, yeah, I mean, just construction at, at the level of construction, like you're talking about, it is so easy and doable and planable to put in like a long linear uh, trench drain and to have that barrier free showers. Transom. Having... Transom. Transom window. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. You. Yes. I appreciate <laughs> someone. Someone knows what I'm talking about. Thank yes. you. Thank Transom you. Transom windows. <laughs> yes. My parents have those in their bedroom. They're beautiful and they bring in so much nice light. Yeah. I love that. Uh, oh, good. Yeah. So you, you know, exactly like your parents, yeah. that. that's so wonderful. Yeah. I was going to, uh, oh, okay. Let me read, read some of the comments. Please share again, both of your sites and contact info. Lindsay, you go first. So I have a website, which is equip me OT, which is all one word E Q U I P M E O T. So equip me OT.com. Um, we'll show you some written out versions of the, um, uh, the videos I've made. So like a written resource, if you're more comfortable reading something versus watching it. Um, but it also has links to my YouTube channel, which is also called Equip Me OT. Um, and on the YouTube channel, it's a little different content than what I do on my Instagram, which is also Equip Me OT. Um, and that is going to be, um, the YouTube channel is very um, stepwise, um, very detailed videos giving a lot of insider stuff about OT in a lot of recovery processes. So I spend a lot of time going over like recovering from back surgery, recovering from knee surgery, recovering from hip, shoulder, you name it. Um, And then of course my Instagram channel is much more, I do a lot of kind of reviewing gadgets and talking about some interesting things I've found. 
Um, and I'm always, I love getting messages from folks. So if you have specific questions or content ideas that you are like, hey, just in case you've ever considered, I love that. So feel free to follow me and, and I would love to hear from you if you have specific questions on anything I can shed light on. That's perfect. Thank you for sharing that. And I'll share, yeah. um, uh, you can, I have a couple websites, one on Instagram, um, I am at hard time wiping. I have a website called hardtimewiping.com that has uh, my course where I talk about toilet techniques and four different ways for you to clean up your booty easier. And so that is focused on changing the area around the toilet and using equipment to do that. So it's just really one hour course, great for anyone. You don't have to be an occupational therapist or healthcare professional. It's just super simple and easy. And um, I'm also at stayathomesolutionskc.com. That really is, I used to do home mods in the community here in the KC Metro, but with the pandemic, I pivoted and because I, I found that I really like creating content more. Um, so I do have a newsletter that comes out twice a month and um, I write regular blog posts on my website that not only talk about uh, the bathroom, which is my favorite topic, obviously, but I also do um, talk about other parts of uh, the home, uh, different universal design or focusing on caregivers because I have also as an occupational therapist, my background also includes being a caregiver to my grandparents. So I have both of those um, uh, kind of nice backgrounds that, that help. I know what it's like as a caregiver, but I also know what it's like as a healthcare professional. Um, let's see, and somebody asked, uh, who can I te team up with as an interior designer, aging in place specialist? I have a lot of um, knowledge for you, buddy, in Toronto. Um, I do, the first place you can check out is uh, the Universal Design Project. They are a nonprofit in the U.S. Um, they are uh, occupational therapists who team up with architects, designers, um, anything like that to plan um, homes. I also do believe commercial spaces, but they do focus more on residential areas to um, make it so that those residents can live at home. Um, so I love Sarah and her husband. They're great. Um, also, you can check out homoda.net. That's H M O T A. Net. That's the Home Modification Occupational Therapy Alliance. I mentioned Karen Koch earlier. She runs that organization. Um, those are usually, she can help you find occupational therapists in the U.S. I don't know about Canada, but I'm sure she has some contacts up there. Were there any um, resources you could think of, Lindsay? Yeah, I was, I was, Karen Koch is one, and I know she has, uh, I know she has international contacts. Um, oh, good. So that, that is, is a, she's, she's based here out of Michigan and, um, and does reach quite a ways. I don't think within the HMOTA website she has that, but if you contact them directly, they can link you to, there are some Canadian ones that I don't know off the top of my head. I wasn't prepared with that information, um, but there are a good number of Canadian, and, and quite honestly, what I was, what I would do is, um, reach out directly to those organizations that you brought up because they absolutely have um, international outreach. So, and Canadian, o the Canadian OT um, Association is an incredible resource in themselves. Oh. So I would certainly uh, reach out to them directly. They're always ha more than happy to share that. So that's a good place to go. If you go to their website, um, they would be able to probably give you some guidance there. That is, yeah, thank you so much for adding that. Um, yeah. Was there anything else? I, I, I don't want to wrap up, but I also want to be respectful of your time because I feel like I could talk to you forever. <laughs> well, we I have a question. Be for four hours. <laughs> I have a question. Absolutely. I'm a talker, so <laughs> it's dangerous. Um, yeah. I, only, I have a question for you. So I was thinking before we, before I came on here, I, you had asked like my favorite overall and oh, I'm yes. talking like, if we can't, if we can't, we're cutting out like the dream bathroom. We're talking a typical bathroom that is not set up to be accessible. What is your favorite product? Like a, not a product that you necessarily be like one, one size fits all, but one that you really just like to use. What is your go-to for like the toilet? You know, like what well, is your favorite toilet. thing? Well, well, it's like was... more universal. No, it's more universal. Well, I was thinking the, the, Problem, I, I kind of have two, so I'm going to try yeah, to be short fine. with it. But There's no rules. Uh, 
when when I was thinking about um, my favorite, like for this works for most bathrooms, and it's it's a problem in most homes in the U.S. is I think about the bathroom door, and mm. it's too narrow, and so people aren't able to use. This happened with my grandfather, where he wasn't able to use his walker um, to actually get into the bathroom to use the bathroom. So my favorite, like really inexpensive home mod, um, is offset hinges. They work for most doorways. They give you that extra inch and a quarter, inch and a half, so that you can get in and out of the bathroom. If you spend like 40, 50 bucks and you know, change out the hinges on your own and you're done, son. You don't have to pay uh, to have a remodeler come in and widen doorways. So that is just like, that's, that's my, uh, one of the things that I do recommend a lot. Now, sometimes it doesn't work, especially like, um, a bathroom I tried, like the door swung inward and mm -hmm. there was a bathroom counter. So when the door swung, when we put the offset hinges on, it swung out too far and it hit the counter. So you couldn't actually get into the bathroom. So there are issues that you can run into, but for the most part, that is the, the number one cheap, easy um, way to do it. And then for the toilet, I mean, if any, I mean, this may not come as a surprise, I love bidet seats. I love, I use a bidet seat. I love it. Like why hadn't I used a bidet seat prior to me knowing about them? I don't know. They're the greatest. <laughs> I agree. Like, I, I love it. My husband was like, he, he got it for me for my birthday uh, a couple years ago. And um, he was like, Ew, this, this is weird, blah, blah, blah. Guess who loves it? Guess who loves oh, the Daisy? You want a Father's Day gift, everybody? Get, yeah. <laughs> you may, get the man in your life. Now, see, I, I recently got um, gifted, and I am truly grateful for the gift, the Cascade 3000, which is a heated Ooh. seat bidet. Oh, my gosh. If you've never sat <laughs> on a toilet seat that is heated for you and then produces hot water or hot water, warm water bidet, it is incredible, and it is so... Uh, this particular, somebody just asked, do you need a plug for a bidet seat? This type you do, but not all bidet seats require a plug, an outlet near your, your toilet, because that is definitely a challenge in, in many bathrooms. I just so happen mm -hmm. to have a bathroom with a weirdly close outlet. It's probably not code now that I think about it, but uh, <laughs> I didn't construct it. Um, most bidets, in fact, do not. Um, I yeah. know that the other two, so I have every style of bidet in my home currently i have oh, the awesome. fancy plug-in bidet with the heated seat i have a very basic lux bidet one neo 120 nice. which is like one of the more popular ones on amazon it was the first one i ever installed it um my grandma has that one too and loves it oh by the way. yay and can i just say after getting her with set up with a bidet she has had she had seven urinary tract infections last year since getting the bidet she has had zero Oh and my I gosh, honest, I honestly thought? think, right? Well, it turns out she was having a hard time. She has some incontinence um, mm -hmm. and mostly urinary incontinence, which you don't think about. You know, mm -hmm. it's not as messy and she wasn't necessarily showering every day. She would clean mm -hmm. up, but she wasn't showering every day. So getting a bidet in there so that every time she would go to the bathroom, she would rinse properly. What a difference. And she feels yeah. so much better. Um, and so that is huge. Um, and I have several videos on that on my YouTube channel. If you ever want to see how to install one of those, because they're really not difficult to install. I am no plumber and I have installed all of ours. I also have a handheld sprayer bidet, which is often referred to as the diaper sprayer, because that's what they were often <laughs> used for is if you use yeah. reusable diapers, you spray off and then you chuck them in your washing machine. So that's in my laundry room bathroom. And let me just tell you, for refilling the mop bucket, for refilling my um, my my spot cleaner for my floor, having a bidet, it's great because it's just like a little, it's like having a tiny handheld shower head that's loose in my bathroom. Yeah, but it, also cleaning, well it makes cleaning so good. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I also just did an electric bidet video, that little handheld number that I, I posted, I posted yes. the other day. That thing is, <laughs> is nifty. And, and I just, I'm blown away by the options that have come out in just the last few years. I think thanks to the toilet paper shortage, everyone was like, we should all get the days. But yeah, totally agree. The days are fantastic and a really nice accessibility option for individuals that struggle. Yes, like you're mentioning, I love that there's so many different options, so many different price points. Um, yes. it's, it's just, it's so excellent. And those are the top two things, especially I still work, um, in a cute PRN. And mm -hmm. I mean that for, for anyone who I see who's had back surgery or hip surgery, shoulder, 
I am always recommending handheld bidets or um, bidet seats. And um, I also, I, I don't, you know, focus, I, I was never um, trained in peds. I, that was um, something that I always knew I wanted to work with adults. So I was like, yeah. eh, let's do this. I don't mind having a child, but you know, treating them is so different. Mm -hmm. And um, I had a friend who asked me um, who has a child who um, is having some, like he, he is kind of averse to cold. Um, he is not thorough at cleaning himself after um, having a bowel movement. And so even having or using like a portable bidet for children is so much nicer and it's a little bit easier of an introduction. I'm actually going to do that with my daughter who's two um, and using um, like a portable bidet just because the water stream is a gentler. little bit more gentle. Yeah. And, and you're able to help them out um, pretty easy that way. So um, Absolutely. If, if anyone has any kids that, and you're wondering like, how can I get away from toilet paper or wet wipes? Um, that could be something to consider because you can also, with it being winter too, you can also go to your bathroom sink and put in uh, warm, water, warm water, not hot, like we talked about, like, not hot, but uh, just lukewarm water and um, help clean up your kiddo that way. So yeah, a little bit and this, easier. this model that I was playing with um, actually on the box shows a parent using it for a child oh, are you in serious? a diaper. And oh. so I was like, oh, wow, okay. Because I have seen them used in hospice. So oh, for, and excellent. I had mentioned yeah. in my description in perinatal yes. care, yes. and a lot of times people who are, especially if they've been in a seated or bed level position, they may have some wounds. Yeah. And so um, if uh, I worked in, I worked with spinal cord injury, uh, patients with spinal cord injuries for a long time. And when you have wounds down there and you're also requiring a good deal of cleanup after a bowel program or something like that, it's essential you use a perineal cleansing bottle and not. But this is a this is a very gentle option with multiple uh, pressure options, and it's gonna it, it's just it's it's lower effort on the user because it's got a push button. All you do is push the button; it stays on. You don't have to hold the button. You push it; it stays on. You push it again; it turns off. Um, and so yeah, it's it's just a it's a really nice gentle option, um, and I've seen it be very very effective um, for people to stay clean and comfortable and reduce that very unpleasant experience. And let's talk about the environment. We're, we're yes. not using we're not using 600 wipes to try to get yes. somebody clean. We're we're getting them we're getting them cleaned up initially with the water, and then a simple one or two wipes, and you're all cleaned up instead of chiseling away with a bunch of wipes and causing that redness and that soreness. Um, I know for my I know for a lot of my folks that that's a that's a game changer. That makes people feel so much better and so much more human <laughs> than, yes. than some of the alternative options um, that we have out there. I love those two things very much. I love offset hinges and I absolutely love bidets. Obviously I have a bidet house. I yeah. had to say, <laughs> when I was thinking about like my favorite toileting piece of equipment, I am a huge fan of padded drop arm commodes. Oh, yes. I, as far as like versatility <laughs> and quality and something, because most people end up at some point that I'm seeing oftentimes they'll have gotten through Medicare or through their insurance, the only thing that you can get for the bathroom, which is a standard commode, I don't like standard commodes. I find that they just, they're uncomfortable, yeah. they're pinchy, they are just so bare minimum yes. that um, I have found though that insurance companies will work with me a little bit if I say, mm -hmm. can we take off the price of a standard commode and buy a padded drop arm commode? Oh. Now, I've had a little more flex with that just because I've worked with a lot of private insurance. Um, but you can absolutely kind of negotiate with an insurance provider about those types of pieces of equipment. If you have a, if you have a wise OT who can write good letters of medical necessity, <laughs> but a padded drop arm commode is going to give you comfort and it's going to give you versatility of transfer style, yes. which is a, which is when you're talking toileting, especially if you cannot access a bathroom, your home mm -hmm. does not have an accessible bathroom. It will never get a, you need a commode option. I, tell people to steer clear of a standard commode if they can so afford it and go with the padded drop arm. The difference is huge. <laughs> so yeah. I, I feel like that's not talked about enough. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm no, I'm, passionate yeah, I'm about so that. glad you brought that up. <laughs> yeah, because I, I definitely didn't think, yeah, for sure. Um, that I, I love that. over the toilet too. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, and it could still, it's so like the versatility you're bringing up, this is so good because I know there's some students watching too. And so this is really good for them to keep in the back of their minds yeah. that um, there are different commode types that you don't have to just, you know, accept that. Um, or a standard commode and then also for the documentation purposes and and seeing you know hey we don't have to just accept this one piece of equipment we can actually see if we can upgrade and get more desired equipment um, that yeah I love drop arm commodes too when when I go to work I'm always like where can we find one because there's like a couple but not a lot you know <laughs> yeah they <laughs> disappear like, quickly yes. yeah yeah Yes, yeah, and they're they're you know you've got the versatility of the of the repositionable seat, so you can have the opening on whatever side is functional. Um, you've got it's padded, which is great, but you've got the because it's padded now you can and it's flat now you can use a slide a slide board. You yes. cannot safely use a slide board on a standard commode. It is right. not possible. So if you're dealing no. in trauma cases where you've got multiple fractures, two legs that are non weight bearing, um, or you've got a patient who is is a spinal cord injury. You best not be getting a standard commode. You you oh my God. <laughs> you will end up with the slide board wedged in the toilet seat, and it's just and then you're and then your whole oh terrifying. So Those I, are the I worst. Always, yeah, I always like because this is such an insider thing that I'm like when mm -hmm. I go into a home and they'd have a standard commode and I would get my my rental one out of storage to show them what the difference was. It was like yes. Ew. You yeah, know, and it's, it's like it's life changing. We, yeah, we all should have this information. Um, so that's my that's my soapbox moment. I figured this was the place for me to come out and say, "Padded drop arm promotes for life." So yes, that's my amen to that. That should be. I'm gonna put that in the description. Padded drop arm, <laughs> <laughs> like the description of this video for sure. Because no, seriously, it is just so affordable and just so good for yeah, yeah. like you said, different transfer types and yeah, you can't. You literally, I, I have been in some tricky transfer situations with standard commodes, and yeah, every time I'm like. We should have used a drop. Like, why did we play this, this game? Yeah, because <laughs> the, the only other option is another product that I do really like, and that's for for an on the toilet only product would be the the clamp on toilet seats, which have mm -hmm. their merit in the proper if they are properly fitted. If your toilet bowl, yes. watch out for those little baby round bowls because they're too small and that thing can <laughs> pop out, and then you're in trouble. But for, for yes. the, the standard round bowls that are a little bit bigger, they, they fit well. So the clamp on toilets are also flat. And they have a longer, especially if they have the, the armrests, um, you can pop off one armrest side. And those are the only other way I will do a, a slide board transfer onto a toilet. But you'd be amazed how much time I spent learning that information mm -hmm. outside of school. It was years. It was yes. years before I, so I'm like, I think, I think you and I have a similar goal in life. And that is to like cut the learning curve in half for yes. people so they don't have to do what we did, which was learn the hard way. <laughs> yes. It's like, come, to, come, come join us, come follow along and we will get you the shortcut to this information, whether you're a, a patient who would use this, a caregiver who would use this or a student or an OT who's already practicing. Cause this stuff shouldn't be like heavily guarded secrets. These should be things no. that the whole the whole world <laughs> should be aware of. And that's, I think our, we have a shared mission. And I'm so glad to speak to you face to face. We've had a lot of typing yes. engagement, but this is fun. This is fun. Yeah, this is, yeah, this is so wonderful. And it's so like good to talk to you. And I'm sure like, this is definitely one of my more favorite toilet talk episodes because I feel like we've covered so much and given yeah. like shared so much good information. So I am so grateful to you for coming on today. You are welcome back anytime. <laughs> Perfect. Just let me know. Just pop in randomly. I'll just drop and I'll be in. Like, yeah. yeah, exactly. I'd be like, request to join. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm here <laughs> for like, you. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Lindsay. Thank you, You're everyone welcome. who's joined and everyone who has um, come on. Uh, please share this video with somebody who you think it could benefit. Uh, whether, like Lindsay said, caregiver, student, occupational therapist, practitioner, whoever you are, I really think this is uh, has a lot of good information for you. So thank you for joining Toilet Talk. Um, I will be back next Tuesday at 12 Central Standard Time. Um, I forgot what product I'm going to be talking about, <laughs> but, you know, I was just so excited to talk to Lindsay. I was like, run into my phone. So, <laughs> Do anyway, <it>. but <laughs> yeah. 
Make sure to follow Lindsay at Equip Me OT and uh, follow me at Hard Time Wiping. Thank you so much again, Lindsay. You guys all have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye.